Hello and welcome. In today's video, I wanted to share with you this really great exercise in watercolor. I found this excellent series of videos by Stan Miller on YouTube. I'll leave a link to that in the description. One of the things he talks about is choosing a good subject for a beginner. So if you're a beginner, it would be better to choose a subject that's simpler, that's built up of less objects. It's less complex. And he gives some great examples for that in his videos. So one example he gave for a simple subject or reference photo is something that looked like this, more or less. It's like a series of mountains. So basically you'd make the sky, wait for it to dry, make this other mountain, fade it out, wait for it to dry, and so on with the next mountains. And it's not necessary to copy the reference photo exactly. You can make any sort of mountain shape and you can do this on the fly by just taking a blank piece of paper and putting down your paint in a mountain sort of fashion. Or if you prefer, you could first sketch out your mountains with a pencil and then follow your sketch when you paint. Another thing Stan talks about is for beginners, it's great to just work in monochrome, meaning just use one color. So I chose to use Payne's Gray. The great thing about using Payne's Gray is that you can get a very dark color as opposed to maybe using red or yellow. Um, so it would be better to use a color that can get really dark. And for my palette, I just use this disposable plastic plate. Another thing that Stan talks about is how when you use your paint straight out of the tube, it can get you a really, really dark color if you use it, as opposed to if you let your paint dry and then you use it, it's not going to get as dark as easily as when you use fresh paint out of the tube. So what I did was I took a piece of paper. This is actually a quarter of a quarter of an imperial sheet of St. Cuthbert's Mill Bockingford paper. So even though this paper is pretty expensive or good watercolor paper is pretty expensive, if you, for practice, use smaller pieces of it, it's gonna last you a long, long time. And I also use both sides of the paper. So that's even more cost effective when it's for practice. So what I did here was I just picked a piece of paper and went ahead with the exercise. And I was pretty happy with it. And, and I wanted to move on to another subject. So I jumped and found a reference photo on pexels.com. And then I caught myself and I told myself, wouldn't it be better to keep using this reference photo and keep practicing with the same reference photo. So in the next ones, I taped the borders. Since I don't have a hair dryer and I have to wait for the paint to dry, what I did was I actually taped down several at a time and I did the sky on this one, put it aside to dry. I did the sky on this one, put it aside to dry. And then on this one, put it aside to dry. And then within a few minutes, this was dry went back to this mountain, put it aside to dry, and so on. So I didn't have too much downtime as I was working. I also got to practice this again and again and again. It was really interesting to see how with each one, I did something a little bit different. For example, here you can see that there is a stronger gradation from a darker to a light. And here it's more of a, a lighter color. And then here this one's really dark and this one's lighter, and then you can see, okay, hey, I like this one better. And here, for example, you can see that I got a little bit of a back run, the water going up into here. Here, for example, I tried to mimic what I saw in the reference photo a little bit more closely. And you can also see that in terms of composition, this one is more like the reference photo in terms of how large this black area is, whereas here, it's not at all like the reference photo, and that's totally fine. For me, all of these nuances gave me something to think about and try to control and try to learn from. It gave me more options in terms of how I want to proceed. And then what I did, I thought I'd try a glazing technique. So first I sketched this out. And as I was sketching it out, since I was looking at this photo for like the sixth time, I realized that there were these rays of light. Maybe it, they weren't rays of light. Maybe they were like 
strips of clouds and I got it wrong because I don't have the actual reference photo. I just have a, a still frame from the video, from Stan's video, but it doesn't matter. So I started noticing more details in the, in the reference photo. And so I sketched those details out and I started first put on a very, very light gray, then put on a darker gray and then a darker gray and a darker gray and a darker gray. And obviously put on the darker grays only where it's darker in the reference photo. This gave me a lot more control, but it doesn't mean that this method is wrong or, or I shouldn't go back to using this method. I just know that when I use this method, I had a lot of problem with back runs. Another thing with this exercise, there were so many opportunities to fade out a hard edge. So obviously you want a hard edge over here, but you don't want a hard edge over here and you have to fade it out. So having so many opportunities to fade out hard edges got me a lot more comfortable with fading out hard edges. I started off using a huge brush like this and it does work, but at some point I felt that I preferred to use a smaller brush. So I used this quill or mop brush by Rosemary & Co. It's size five over zero. It's much bigger than a size five round brush. It holds a lot of paint, a lot of water, and it comes to a fine point. It's a pointed round brush. I really love using this brush. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you found it helpful and useful. And I do recommend Stan's series of videos. They're so inspiring. They gave me a lot of focus on how I can practice and get better. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this technique and whether you also practice the same reference photo over and over. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.